Hi everybody, John Page here. I um, just wanted to take this opportunity to show you around our aircraft, our SF-50 Vision Jet, uh, but more importantly, what equipment we have on board the aircraft for everyday operations. Uh, not all of them come as standard with the aircraft, so we've had to purchase a few uh, items. Uh, I'll show you inside the cabin, I'll show you inside the baggage bay, and then I'll get each of those items out and then we can have a look at them in a little bit more detail. So let's step up into the aircraft, into the main cabin, and have a look and see what pieces of equipment we have. We'll start in the rear of the, of the cabin. Um, we do have headsets for every uh, seat. Uh, our aircraft, as you can see here, is set up in a five seat configuration, uh, rather than either a four seat and a console or seven seats. Um, we do have headsets. We tend to keep them on the seats rather than put them on the headrests. We do find that the cups here get a little bit damaged if they're up on the head on the headrests because there's so much compression on there. So we do try and keep them on the seats as much as we can. Um, here we have an air sync box which downloads all the data out of the aircraft. Really, really useful for tracking and monitoring the aircraft and its uh, engine. Um, here we have a travel john. We don't have a potty on board the aircraft or a toilet, so therefore there is a travel john here. Uh, very rarely need it, but, uh, but or I've never had to use it actually, but it's there if required. Uh, also high-vis jacket, that's quite important, especially in the United Kingdom, uh, walking out of your aircraft over to an FBO or a handling agent without a high-vis jacket can get a, a few um, fingers wagging. Uh, part NCC RVSM, minimum equipment list manuals for our aircraft. Our aircraft is uh, American registered. It also has all the letters of authorization to allow us to utilize the RVSM and the MEL manuals and part NCC is required in the UK and Europe. We've also got our Garmin manual there as well. Blanket just in case somebody's getting cold or fancies a bit of a sleep, not the pilot. Um, we've got a start stick in here that must be kept inside the cabin because it must be accessible uh, all the time. I'll get that out and explain a little bit more to you about that in a minute. Um, life raft, we are based on an island so therefore having a life raft or at least life jackets which we also have on board the aircraft uh, is a requirement uh, for us to travel across to different, um, different countries. In the front of the aircraft we have our passenger safety information cards in both seats uh, with our document folders and our tech log as well and up front we actually have our aileron and rudivator locks are in place and actually we do have these on all the time so even though the aircraft is in a hangar it's quite important because the aircraft gets taken in and out of the hangar sometimes to move other aircraft around so these um, aileron and rudivator locks are, are really important uh, because when the aircraft does get taken outside to move other aircraft around and it's windy outside it just protects the control surfaces from being knocked around uh, also even if you park up on a ramp somewhere and it's calm uh, just remember that other aircraft do park around as well so therefore uh, we've been jet blasted a couple of times by aircraft turning around in tight spots so that will protect the rudivators also and the ailerons and up here we have our brakes on brakes off board uh, that's quite important as well because uh, at some places they won't move your aircraft or tow your aircraft if you have uh, if you don't have that on there at the rear of the uh, sf50 we have a really decent sized baggage bay uh, it's not accessible from inside the cabin and it's also not pressurized either so we need to be very aware about what we put inside here we do have a ladder and a tow bar and some chocks it's got a very nice mount up there as well which uh, helps us keep them in place and then the extended cargo tube or ski tube we have our caddy which we can pull out and inside the caddy we have lots of other equipment to help us uh, on everyday operations so here's our start stick what is a start stick? Well, it's a very big battery basically. And if I crack it open here and turn it on, basically what we have this for is uh, if we're down route and we're at a smaller airport, we don't have a ground power unit and we need some extra power for the aircraft, then we can uh, utilize the start stick and plug it straight into the auxiliary, uh, the external power of the aircraft. I've just turned it on here. You can see uh, it says it's got 92% power, which gives us plenty of starts. And uh, also in here, we've got a, um, a cord that we can utilize for recharging it but yeah the start stick is quite a big lump 
and uh, here it is so it's a start stick 15 and uh, I'll show you now how we plug it into the aircraft so here's our start stick it's a start stick uh, 15 it's quite heavy it weighs about 17 pounds um, and uh, but really really easy and simple to fit you can see on here you've just got two bigger holes at the top and one smaller hole at the bottom and that basically just fits in to the external power here so make sure it's the right way around just open that up click it into there give it a little nudge so it's in place and then just turn it on and then once it's turned on you can see here that it's going through it's a uh, startup and it will come and it will hear a little click in a minute there we go there's a little click so it's actually now powered powering the aircraft 92 percent at 100 percent it's going to give about three or four starts and uh, here you can see that we've got 26.4 volts uh, on the start stick as well so really really great piece of equipment to have if you're down route and you're lacking in the actual aircraft battery power supply then you can plug this in the only thing you've got to remember is that once you've started the engine you've got to have somebody to come along and actually remove it for you. But um, really, really great piece of equipment to have on board the aircraft, just in case you're stuck down route at an airport that doesn't have uh, a GPU or any external power supplies. Inflating tires. Now the trouble is sometimes when you're around and down route, you have no way of inflating your tires. So what I've got here is I've got uh, a really, really lovely portable tire inflator. It's a Bosch tire inflator, it says easy pump, really, really util uh, easy to utilize. Uh, we keep it fully charged in the aircraft and um, oh, just turn it on with the red button. So there we go, we can see it's fully charged and uh, really, really nice to have, not expensive, about 80 pounds or so. It can pump up to 120 PSI, really, really useful piece of equipment to have on board the aircraft. And I'll show you now how we inflate the tires with it. So here's our tire inflator. Um, like I said before, it's a, a Bosch one, really, really great to use. It uh, charges via uh, USB-C and uh, we can turn it on. There we go, you can see it's uh, nicely fully charged. Uh, 105, I've got a preset there. Uh, it actually inflates up to 120 PSI. And we can see here on the uh, tire, on the wheel, it says 105 PSI plus or minus five. So uh, let's have a look and see how this tire is doing because they do lose a little bit of pressure over time. So all I'm gonna do on here is just uh, undo the dust cap. So take that off and then plug this in to uh, the tire. So just screw that on quite nicely. There we go. So go on, and there we go. We're at uh, actually 90. So therefore, I'll just put a little bit of air, and you can just hear what it's like. So I'll just start that. There you go. You can see it's starting to pick up now. And uh, what I would normally do, I'll just turn off the noise there. And what I would normally do is I just let that sort of. Uh, pump up and it stops when it gets to 105 so therefore what uh, what I would normally do is just start it pumping go off and do some other stuff and then when I finished it will it would or it will then finish uh, when it gets to the 105 preset so um yeah so that's great so really really useful piece of equipment to, to have I'll inflate those tires a little bit later on because I know that you won't want to sit here and uh watch a a tire inflating and I'll just put the dust cap back on and then we'll all be good. So yeah, I'll do that a little bit later on, but really, really useful piece of equipment just to have on board the aircraft uh, in the caddy at the back. Here's our tow bar. It's actually an SR22 tow bar, but it works perfectly uh, with the SF50 as well because it's got these little notches at the end here which sit quite nicely into the little hole in the uh, the nose wheel and um, you know a lot of people say you don't need to have a tow bar for the SF50 however when you're operating in and around places that don't have uh, a handling agent or a tug or anything then it's really really useful to have the tow bar so it just slots in we can turn the black lever here until it slots itself into place and then we've got the tow bar nicely attached onto the aircraft and maybe the help of some other people you can push the aircraft around because some places won't have tow bars available for the aircraft or their powered tugs also can't move the aircraft so it's really really useful and uh, you know it's not very expensive it's a couple of hundred dollars you can fit it in the back of the aircraft really really easily as you saw earlier on in the video where we have it behind the ladder uh, in the in the baggage bay so really really nice piece of equipment to have not a lot of money and it will probably you'll be very very useful and uh, you'll be glad to have it one day
So here's the caddy that we have in the back of the aircraft. Really, really useful um, for, um, for storing lots of pieces of equipment uh, in the aircraft for just everyday use. So what do we have in here? Well, we've got a couple of different glass cleaners. Uh, so we've got invisible glass there. We've also got some Prist as well, which really, really help sort of uh, to keep the windscreens nice and clean. Uh, in here as well, we've also got a plastic container, which we have um, cloths which are for cleaning only, so that we can try and keep those cloths uh, completely separate from anything else that we might use in the aircraft as well. Um, really good use here for uh, a uh, an older Bose headset bag and so if I open up this what we can see inside here I've just put in here the tie down uh, straps for the cargo bay so if we need to tie down any luggage there and there here we have all of the pins for uh, locking the nose gears if we need to or for maintenance uh, here also we have the tie down rings for to go in under the wings uh, not used very often but I have had to put them in a couple of times when we've been in certain places that require aircraft to be tied down got jacking points and a few bits and pieces in there so that keeps that nice and neat and tidy uh, Cirrus actually with the newer aircraft do actually supply bags now to put all of those um, uh, jacking points and stuff in what have we got in the middle here well this bit here is actually waterproof so therefore what we have in here is anything that's sort of a bit liquidy so I've got some uh, wet wipes always use for um, cleaning up yourself after you've put oil in the aircraft. I've got another high-vis jacket in here as well uh, just in case we need that and then important stuff here we've got the flask for the oil. Now this flask is actually metal inside so jet oil we've got mobile jet 2 oil inside here now jet oil um, reacts with silicon so if you put it into anything that's plastic the oil will start to degrade the plastic and then it will affect the oil and then you put the oil inside the aeroplane and that won't be very good for the aircraft so we've got oil inside here I'll just open this up it gets a bit, little bit tight oh there we go so that's all opened up got a little bit of oil inside there that you can probably see and then what we need to do is figure out a way of getting that from the flask into the aircraft and there's a few different ways that you can do that you can you got these pump action sort of dispensers you can use all sorts of stuff what we use is we use um, syringes and uh, the syringes even though these are plastic actually we use these as a one-time use only so what we do is we just take off the lid we suck up the oil inside the uh, syringe and because the um, uh, the receptor where, where you put the oil inside the engine is quite narrow you need to have quite a narrow tube to be able to put the oil in so we basically suck up the oil I can also tell on here how much oil I'm putting in each time so I can monitor that and then once I've used this I just throw it away afterwards um, so I use this as a one time only um, they're only about five six pound for three of them and because we only put oil in the aircraft maybe every 30 hours or so then actually it's not a, a very expensive way of being able to put oil in the aircraft but also um, it's a clean way as well because once you finish with it you just throw it away so we've got a couple of those in there uh, I've also got a GATS jar as well in here and a little plastic bag um, so this is for draining the fuel so that's still important uh, with the uh, jet aircraft to actually drain the fuel uh, you're looking for algae and things like that that might be growing inside your fuel tanks also in here as well I have uh, a little bag and in the little bag I have a screwdriver which is going to be useful for me to open up the uh, oil flap uh, the new aircraft have a poppers now so but the older aircraft still needs a Phillips blade screwdriver I have a Leatherman to be able to help with doing anything I might need to screw on like panels and stuff like that in the aircraft I've also got an oil opener as well for the oil cans when I need a fresh can of oil then what I do is when I open a fresh can of oil I actually put it inside the flask so um so yeah so I've got a little bag there with a few bits and pieces in which are always very useful and then over here I've got a box with um, some paper funnels in which in case I run out of syringes then I've actually got paper funnels again I can utilize those and then throw them away here I've got a garden spray, um, a garden multi-purpose spray and what I do is I have this in the aircraft but mainly in the winter time I'll have this full of TKS fluid. The reason for that really is because um, it's quite difficult to get type 1 fluid uh, at airports uh, when we're flying around so therefore I have some TKS fluid in here so if I do have any ice on the aircraft then I would try and uh, utilize the TKS fluid to, um, to get rid of the ice. You probably saw that in one of my other videos in Iceland myself utilizing one of these to actually spray the aircraft and get rid of
rid of the ice off the wings of the aircraft. So that's quite good. And then here I've got another Bose headset pack, which I don't use anymore. And what I have in here, I've got some spare travel johns, just in case they get used in the aircraft. But also here I've got the ratchet straps for tying down the aircraft if I need to, if I'm down route at an airport that requires me to have the aircraft tied down or if I think it's gonna be windy. So really, really useful um, here for with the caddy, some cleaning, cleaning equipment, and then all the oil and the liquidy stuff's in here and some other items, really, really useful to have in the back of the aircraft. And it fits straight into the extended tube as well. So therefore it leaves the cabin, uh, the baggage bay open for uh, baggage. The ladder we have for the aircraft is really, really lovely. It's really, really thin, which is great. So it slots into the baggage bay really nicely. It literally weighs a couple of kilos. So in fact, it, it's, it takes up no uh, space or weight for uh, in the baggage bay. And then it opens up really, really nicely and very, very simply into sort of like three steps. So you can put this next to the aircraft and then utilize it to get up into the oil and uh, put the oil in with our syringe. So really, really lovely purchase. Uh, it's not a lot of money, it's sort of like 30 pounds, 40 pounds. Uh, folds up really, really simply. I can take it and put it back in the baggage bay. So how do we get the ladder back into the baggage bay? Well, really, really nice and simply, it just slides in. We always go to the top of it first, to slide that back into there and it sits on here. We've got a little mount at the top here and we've got a little bungee strap. The bungee strap quite simply just clicks onto the edge of the ladder here and then we wrap that around there as well and then we click this onto the ladder as well and it's nice and secure as in, in place. So I just put it out very, very slightly. Then take our tow bar and we just slide the tow bar in behind. There we go. And I've got our chocks there and then we've got the tow bar the ladder and our chocks all nicely in the back of the aircraft, leaving plenty of room for bags and our caddy is back there as well. Hope you enjoyed watching my short video on a few of the items that we have on board our SF50. Hopefully it might come in handy and give you a few ideas uh, regarding what you might want in your aircraft, uh, but they're all very, very useful. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll catch up with you soon.